The economic liberalization in India refers to the changes and reforms, initiated in 1991, of the country economic policies, with the goal of making the economy more market and service oriented, and expanding the role of private and foreign investment. Most of these changes were made as part of the conditions laid out by the World Bank and the IMF as a condition for a $500 million bail out to the Indian government in December 1991. Specific changes include a reduction in import tariffs, deregulation of markets, reduction of taxes, and greater foreign investment. Liberalization has been credited by its proponents for the high economic growth recorded by the country in the 1990s and 2000s. Its opponents have blamed it for increased inequality and economic degradation. The overall direction of liberalization has since remained the same, irrespective of the ruling party, although no party has yet solved a variety of politically difficult issues, such as liberalizing labor laws and reducing agricultural subsidies. There exists a lively debate in India as to whether the economic reforms were sustainable and beneficial to the people of India as a whole. Indian government coalitions have been advised by the IMF and World Bank to continue liberalization. Before 2015, India grew at a slower pace than China, which had been liberalizing its economy since 1978. In 2015, India's GDP growth outpaced that of China. The McKinsey Quarterly stated that removing major obstacles would free India's economy to grow as fast as China's, at 10% a year. There has been significant debate, however, around liberalization as an inclusive economic growth strategy. Income inequality has deepened in India since 1992, with consumption among the poorest staying stable while the wealthiest generate consumption growth. India S gross domestic product GDP growth rate in 2012-13 was the lowest for a decade at just 5.1% at which time more criticism of India S economic reforms surfaced it apparently failed to address employment growth nutritional values in terms of food intake in calories and also export growth and thereby was leading to a worsening current account deficit compared to the period prior to reform the country continues to perform poorly in all developmental aspects, with high unemployment among the youth, poor women's security, rampant corruption, the highest number of malnourished children and poor sanitation. Pre-liberalization policies Indian economic policy after independence was influenced by the colonial experience which was seen by Indian leaders as exploitative in nature and by those leaders' exposure to Fabian socialism. Policy tended towards protectionism, with a strong emphasis on import substitution industrialization under state monitoring, state intervention at the micro level in all businesses especially in labor and financial markets, a large public sector, business regulation, and central planning. Five-year plans of India resembled central planning in the Soviet Union. Steel, mining, machine tools, water, telecommunications, insurance, and electrical plants, among other industries, were effectively nationalized in the mid-1950s. Elaborate licenses, regulations and the accompanying red tape, commonly referred to as license raj, were required to set up business in India between 1947 and 1990. Before the process of reform began in 1991, the government attempted to close the Indian economy to the outside world. The Indian currency, the rupee, was inconvertible and high tariffs and import licensing prevented foreign goods reaching the market. India also operated a system of central planning for the economy, in which firms required licenses to invest and develop. The labyrinthine bureaucracy often led to absurd restrictions. Up to 80 agencies had to be satisfied before a firm could be granted a license to produce and the state would decide what was produced, how much, at what price and what sources of capital were used. The government also prevented firms from laying off workers or closing factories. The central pillar of the policy was import substitution, the belief that India needed to rely on internal markets for development, not international trade. A belief generated by a mixture of socialism and the experience of colonial exploitation. Planning and the state, rather than markets, would determine how much investment was needed in which sectors. Pre-1991 liberalization attempts 
Topic. Attempts were made to liberalize the economy in 1966 and 1985. The first attempt was reversed in 1967. Thereafter, a stronger version of socialism was adopted. The second major attempt was in 1985 by Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. The process came to a halt in 1987, though a 1967 style reversal did not take place. In the 80s, the government led by Rajiv Gandhi started light reforms. The government slightly reduced license Raj and also promoted the growth of the telecommunications and software industries. The Chandra Shikhar Singh government took several significant steps towards the much needed reforms and laid its foundation. Prevailing situation during 1980s the low annual growth rate of the economy of India before 1980, which stagnated around 3.5% from 1950s to 1980s, while per capita income averaged 1.3%. At the same time, Pakistan grew by 5%, Indonesia by 9%, Thailand by 9%, South Korea by 10% and Taiwan by 12%. Only four or five licenses would be given for steel, electrical power and communications. License owners built up huge powerful empires. A huge private sector emerged. State-owned enterprises made large losses. Income Tax Department and Customs Department became inefficient in checking tax evasion. Infrastructure investment was poor because of the public sector monopoly. License Raj established the irresponsible, self-perpetuating bureaucracy that still exists throughout much of the country." And corruption flourished under this system. The fruits of liberalization reached their peak in 2006, when India recorded its highest GDP growth rate of 9.6%. With this, India became the second fastest growing major economy in the world, next only to China. The growth rate has slowed significantly in the first half of 2012. An Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD report states that the average growth rate 7.5% will double the average income in a decade, and more reforms would speed up the pace. The economy then rebounded to 7.3% growth in 2014-15. First reforms 1991-96 Topic. Crisis Topic. By 1991, India still had a fixed exchange rate system, where the rupee was pegged to the value of a basket of currencies of major trading partners. India started having balance of payments problems since 1985, and by the end of 1990, the state of India was in a serious economic crisis. The government was close to default, its central bank had refused new credit and foreign exchange reserves had reduced to the point that India could barely finance three weeks' worth of imports. It had to pledge 20 tons of gold to Union Bank of Switzerland and 47 tons to Bank of England as part of a bailout deal with the International Monetary Fund Most of the economic reforms were forced upon India as a part of the IMF bailout. A balance of payments crisis in 1991 pushed the country to near bankruptcy. In return for an IMF bailout, gold was transferred to London as collateral, the rupee devalued and economic reforms were forced upon India. That low point was the catalyst required to transform the economy through badly needed reforms to unshackle the economy. Controls started to be dismantled, tariffs, duties and taxes progressively lowered, state monopolies broken, the economy was open to trade and investment, private sector enterprise and competition were encouraged and globalization was slowly embraced. The reforms process continues today and is accepted by all political parties, but the speed is often held hostage by coalition politics and vested interests. Liberalization of 1991 and World Bank Loan In 1991, Prime Minister Narasimha Rao, along with his finance minister Manmohan Singh, initiated the economic liberalization of 1991. The reforms did away with the license Raj, reduced tariffs and interest rates and ended many public monopolies, allowing automatic approval of foreign direct investment in many sectors. 
Since then, the overall thrust of liberalization has remained the same, although no government has tried to take on powerful lobbies such as trade unions and farmers, on contentious issues such as reforming labor laws and reducing agricultural subsidies. By the turn of the 21st century, India had progressed towards a free market economy, with a substantial reduction in state control of the economy and increased financial liberalization. This has been accompanied by increases in life expectancy, literacy rates and food security. Although urban residents have benefited more than rural residents, on the 12th of November 1991, based on an application from the government of India, World Bank sanctioned a structural adjustment loan credit that consisted of two components, an IBRD loan of 250 million dollars to be paid over 20 years and an IDA credit of SDR 183.8 million, equivalent to 250 million dollars with 35 years maturity, through India's Ministry of Finance, with the President of India as the borrower. The loan was meant primarily to support the government's program of stabilization and economic reform. This specified deregulation, increased foreign direct investment, liberalization of the trade regime, reforming domestic interest rates, strengthening capital markets stock exchanges, and initiating public enterprise reform selling off public enterprises. Later reforms The Bharatiya Janata Party BJP Adil Bihari Vajpayee administration surprised many by continuing reforms, when it was at the helm of affairs of India for six years, from 1998–99 and from 1999–2004. The BJP-led National Democratic Alliance Coalition began privatizing underperforming government-owned business including hotels, VSNL, Maruti Suzuki, and airports, and began reduction of taxes, an overall fiscal policy aimed at reducing deficits and debts and increased initiatives for public works. The United Front government attempted a progressive budget that encouraged reforms, but the 1997 Asian financial crisis and political instability created economic stagnation. Towards the end of 2011, the Congress-led UPA II coalition government initiated the introduction of 51% foreign direct investment in retail sector. But due to pressure from fellow coalition parties and the opposition, the decision was rolled back. However, it was approved in December 2012. In the early months of 2015, the second BJP-led NDA government under Narendra Modi further opened up the insurance sector by allowing up to 49% FDI. This came seven years after the previous government attempted and failed to push through the same reforms and 16 years after the sector was first opened to foreign investors up to 26% under the first BJP-led NDA government under Adil Bihari Vajpayee's administration. The second BJP-led NDA government also opened up the coal industry through the passing of the Coal Mines Special Provisions Bill of 2015. It effectively ended the Indian central government's monopoly over the mining of coal, which existed since nationalization in 1973 through socialist controls. It has opened up the path for private, foreign investments in the sector, since Indian arms of foreign companies are entitled to bid for coal blocks and licenses, as well as for commercial mining of coal. This could result in billions of dollars investments by domestic and foreign miners. The move is also beneficial to the state-owned Coal India Limited, which may now get the elbow room to bring in some much-needed technology and best practices, while opening up prospects of a better future for millions of mine workers. In the 2016 budget session of Parliament, the Narendra Modi-led BJP government pushed through the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. The code creates time-bound processes for insolvency resolution of companies and individuals. These processes will be completed within 180 days. If insolvency cannot be resolved, the assets of the borrowers may be sold to repay creditors. This law drastically eases the process of doing business, according to experts and is considered by many to be the second most important reform in India since 1991 next to the proposed GST. On July 1, 2017, the BJP-led NDA government under Narendra Modi launched the Goods and Services Tax India. This came years after the previous government attempted and failed to push through the same reform and 17 years after the legislation was proposed under the first BJP-led NDA government under Adil Bihari Vajpayee's administration in 2000. Touted to be India 
S biggest tax reform in 70 years of independence and the most important overall reform in terms of ease of doing business since 1991. GST replaces a slew of indirect taxes with a unified tax structure and is therefore set to dramatically reshape the country's $2.5 trillion economy. Impact the impact of these reforms may be gauged from the fact that total foreign investment including foreign direct investment, portfolio investment, and investment raised on international capital markets in India grew from a minuscule $132 million in 1991-92 to $5.3 billion in 1995-96. Annual growth in GDP per capita has accelerated from just 1.25% in the three decades after independence to 7.5% currently, a rate of growth that will double average income in a decade. In service sectors where government regulation has been eased significantly or is less burdensome, such as communications, insurance, asset management and information technology, Output has grown rapidly, with exports of information technology-enabled services particularly strong. In those infrastructure sectors which have been open to competition, such as telecoms and civil aviation, the private sector has proven to be extremely effective and growth has been phenomenal. Election of A.B. Vajpayee as Prime Minister of India in 1998 and his agenda was a welcome change. His prescription to speed up economic progress included solution of all outstanding problems with the West Cold War related and then opening gates for FDI investment. In three years, the West was developing a bit of a fascination to India's brainpower, powered by IT and BPO. By 2004, the West would consider investment in India, should the conditions permit. By the end of Vajpayee's term as Prime Minister, a framework for the foreign investment had been established. The new incoming government of Dr. Manmohan Singh in 2004 further strengthened the required infrastructure to welcome the FDI. Today, fascination with India is translating into active consideration of India as a destination for FDI. A study by A.T. Carney named India as the second most likely destination for FDI in 2005 after China. It has displaced U.S. to the third position. This is a great leap forward. India was at the 15th position, only a few years back. To quote the A.T. Carney study, India's strong performance among manufacturing and telecom and utility firms was driven largely by their desire to make productivity-enhancing investments in IT, business process outsourcing, research and development, and knowledge management activities. Topic challenges to further reforms Topic For 2010, India was ranked 124th among 179 countries in Index of Economic Freedom World Rankings, which is an improvement from the preceding year. Slow growth of the agricultural sector, a sector in which where more than half of India's population works highly restrictive and complex labour laws. High inflation high poverty corruption and graft lack of political consensus and Willot summarized the key reforms that are needed. In labor markets, employment growth has been concentrated in firms that operate in sectors not covered by India's highly restrictive labor laws. In the formal sector, where these labor laws apply, employment has been falling and firms are becoming more capital intensive despite abundant low-cost labor. Labor market reform is essential to achieve a broader base development and provide sufficient and higher productivity jobs for the growing labor force. In product markets, inefficient government procedures, particularly in some of the states, acts as a barrier to entrepreneurship and need to be improved. Public companies are generally less productive than private firms and the privatization program should be revitalized. A number of barriers to competition in financial markets and some of the infrastructure sectors, which are other constraints on growth, also need to be addressed. The indirect tax system needs to be simplified to create a true national market, while for direct taxes, the taxable base should be broadened and rates lowered. Public expenditure should be re-oriented towards infrastructure investment by reducing subsidies. Furthermore, social policies should be improved to better reach the poor and, given the importance of human capital, the education system also needs to be made more efficient. Though recently labor law reforms have been enacted at the state level topic reforms at the state level topic according to an OECD survey of the Indian economy states that had more liberal regulatory regimes had better economic performance. The survey also concluded that were complementary measures for better delivery of infrastructure, education and basic services implemented, they would boost employment creation and poverty reduction. 
Topic see also topic Economy of India Globalization in India License Raj Hindu Rate of Growth Economic Miracle topic References topic topic External links topic For a short educational video of the «Economic History of India». Nick Gillespie 2009. What Slumdog Millionaire Can Teach Americans About Economic Stimulus? Reason. Gertrude and Das 2006. The India Model. The Foreign Affairs. Archived from the original on 7 March 2009. Ravinder Kaur 2015. Good Times, brought to you by Brand Modi. Television and New Media. Ravinder Kaur 2012. India Inc. and its Moral Discontent. Economic and Political Weekly. Aditya Gupta 2006. How Wrong Has the Indian Left Been About Economic Reforms? PDF. Center for Civil Society. Archived from the original PDF on 26 February 2009. The India Report PDF. Aster Research Greater Than, 2007. Archived from the original PDF on 14 January 2009.